Hello everybody, uh, you are welcome to part two of uh, this course of modern wireless communication and application. This is a clip one of part two. Okay, <coughs> sorry. Uh, the part outlines that we will cover in this, uh, in all this part, which will be divided into four or five clips, that what is the, uh, what is and why digital communication uh, block uh, basic block diagrams of digital communications, uh, sampling theorem, uh, analog to digital converters, uh, digital modulations, digital receivers, quality measure in digital communication, uh, effective noise uh, temperature, coding techniques, uh, concepts of errors uh, detection and corrections, uh, error control uh, and coding uh, methods. So actually we will have a different and many topics covered in this uh, very important part of digital communication. Uh, most, not most, actually all systems now, uh, communication systems are based on digital communication. So understanding this part, will um, we will know the limitations and uh, also the challenges as well as the benefits that we can get from digital uh, communication systems. Okay, uh, so um, uh, mainly actually in this part, we will um, introduce the main concept of digital communication and the main differences between digital communication and analog uh, communication. And also after this part, you will be able to demonstrate and uh, to explain the major uh, benefits of uh, digital communication and the major concept what is digital communication? You will be able to understand it very well after this eclipse. Okay, and now if we start with this uh, simple block diagram of analog communication. So uh, in analog communication, as we explained before, so we have this transducer, which converts the physical signal, like, like for example, voice, into elect elect electrical signal, or electrical current where the fluctuations is corresponding to the original fluctuations of the original signal, or very close to it. And then we have filter. In this filter, we select the band of that uh, interested part of this signal, for example, for voice communication. We have uh, uh, the, the, the total uh, bandwidth of uh, human voice is about 10 kilohertz. Uh, actually, it is... Uh, slightly less um, uh, however that usually we are uh, the most of information human information is within bandwidth of about four kilohertz so to save bandwidth we can use filter to take the uh, uh, the the important part of of the spectrum then we have modulation and we explained this in the previous part we have amplitude modulation or frequency modulation or phase modulation and after that we use the trans the, the transmitter which may be frequency uh, uh, like uh, uh, converter so we increase the frequency for example and uh, uh, power amplifier and so on then in the demodulation part simply that we have the receiver but and then we use the demodulation for example receiver but maybe the, the, like down converter of the frequency and then the demodulation where we make the undo of the modulation and then we have uh, uh, filters to remove uh, like uh, uh, any signals or noise outside the interested band then we have our receiver this is the analog communication it was explained already in part one. Okay. Uh, and now in this in this uh, in this system, uh, we have many limitations. For example, in analog communication, it is it has bad performance and quality, highly affected affected by noise and distortion. Uh, once distorted or corrupted, it will not be able to we uh, to restore it. Uh, difficult to edit, record, and encrypt. Not secure and easy to jam it. Uh, not efficient for multiplexing and intensive multiple access devices. Analog integrated circuits are expensive and can be easily corrupted by temperature and drifts. Uh, 
So we have actually many limitations for analog communication. Um, uh, let me explain a little bit more about those uh, uh, problems. Okay, so if I just put it that on the blank screen, yeah. So you can, um, for example, uh, um, if our analog signal is something like that, okay, assume that that you sent this signal, okay. Uh, now this is in time, and this is the amplitude of the signal x of t. Uh, this signal actually is analog. Analog signal it means that it can be anything within the allowed bandwidth. So assume that because of noise or because of uh, 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 of distortion in the channel or corruption, that you receive something else. So uh, assume that you receive uh, this is the signal that you receive. You can see that it, it is shape is still similar, but somehow, of course, it is different now. Um, Usually, we cannot determine or uh, decide what was the original signal because the original signal can be anything within the bandwidth. Of course, if there is something that we receive it like, like here, we receive something like that. Uh, uh, this, this component is, is, is clearly that it is high frequency and it might be outside the frequency of our original signal. So this could be removed by using analog filters or at least reduced. But if the signal, the changes in the signal is within the same bandwidth of the, of the original signal, then it is done. At the receiver, we will not be able to know that what was the original signal. It is it is almost impossible, or it is impossible, or not possible, <laughs> in, um, to be like to use just uh, the software language to uh, restore the original signal. The original signal is gone because of the distortion or because of noise, uh, and due to uh, w when this distortion or noise is within the same bandwidth or it has similar properties as the information signal. So this is one of the most uh, like uh, problems in, in analog communication. Analog communication, we cannot restore the original signal uh, uh, in, in, in analog systems. And, uh, okay, let us go back to this, okay. Uh, it has also uh, uh, it is not possible also to 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 uh, to secure it or actually we can use some kinds of uh, uh, encryption of the signal but it has very uh, like uh, many limitations we don't have the, that many algorithms that we can use and uh, uh, also it is easy to jam uh, the signal so if we have strong interference then it can be easily uh, that uh, uh, block uh, our information signal. Um, uh, it is difficult to edit and record. Of course, analog signals are uh, very difficult to record. If you remember that uh, before uh, the digital communication era that we use, for example, for uh, uh, audio, the, 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 the analog cassette, or uh, the, that uh, uh, also for the videos, they were like very large uh, com uh, uh, compared with the uh, today's, of course, flash memory, for example. And also it has many limitations. For example, in one like uh, uh, analog uh, uh, cassette that we, we were able just to, to record maybe one hour or one and a half hour. And uh, now we have just flash memory that you, you can uh, have like thousands of uh, voice or of music of ours. And uh, of course, it is it is it is a big difference between analog and digital uh, capabilities. Um, okay. So. Uh, this is the reason, actually, or, or the reason, sorry, that we move to digital communication. Now the question is, what is digital communication? Okay, uh, the concept of digital communication is that instead of sending the original signal as it is, we convert the original signal to symbols that represent the original signal, and those symbols are known at the transmitter and as well as 
at the receiver and just the the difference is how it, is the consequence of of these symbols to make it easy if we use binary system and we call it like 0 and 1 now we send like symbol 0 or symbol 1 so depends on the on the instance of analog signal at certain time instead of sending the analog signal itself we send it is a representation so it is for example 001 or 1110 or whatever so we send series of 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 symbols to represent that instance of transmission okay now because the symbols are known uh, at the transmitter and at the receiver so if the symbol was distorted a little bit because of the channel or noisy then the receiver is still able to restore the original signal because it knows what it will be we send either symbol one or symbol two or symbol for example if we send uh, the uh, four symbols different symbols then we know the number of symbols we we know the space of symbols so it can be symbol one or symbol two or symbol three or symbol four for example and then because of that distortion so the symbol was received incorrectly or received a corrupted version then the receiver can make matching between the received symbol and all other possible symbols and then select the most likely that this was the one which was transmitted of course if the noise is high and the corruption is uh, uh, high as well so it is possible that we make um, like like error in the in the decision so we for example we think uh, based on the received symbol that the transmitted symbol was symbol one but actually it was symbol two this is error in the in in the detection but still in digital communication we have the ability to correct uh, this error to detect and correct this error so uh, this makes actually or gives the digital communication very high benefits compared with analog uh, communication so in digital communication in general you can see that uh, uh, first part after our analog input or even digital input so we need to convert this input into symbols so we don't take the analog as it is so we first convert it to symbols to represent that analog signal and then we use the process uh, we, we process those symbols to be valid for transmission for example we make encryption we make uh, uh, for example uh, uh, compression to to save to save like bandwidth or uh, add some redundant symbols to make it possible to detect errors and correct them so we can make some process here and after that we have digital communication still we cannot it is like analog communication we cannot just connect the symbols directly to the antenna we need to make digital communication or digital modulation what is the digital modulation it is very similar to what we did in analog communication we have either AM but here we call we call it amplitude amplitude shift keying instead of saying that it is amplitude modulation or frequency shift keying or phase shift keying or hybrid from those three then we have uh, the, the after the transmission the signal is uh, received by the receiver and then we have digital demodulation to, to to remove the modulation part modulation we know why we need modulation from previous uh, part part one and then we find the best symbol match because we we for every instance of time for the analog signal we assign certain symbol for that and then we need to find the best symbol match in this case and then we have process symbols so for example if we make here encryption we need to make decryption or if we make uh, like uh, compression we need here to make decompression so we remove uh, 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 any process done for the transmission and return it to the original symbols and after the uh, converting them to the original symbols we make the convert to the original signal so here we convert to symbols and here we convert from symbols to the original signal so this is the, the main concept of digital communication of course during this part we are going to um, to talk about every block in details and to see how to do it so why digital communication so uh, based on what we have e explained so far so it is possible to, to make exact regeneration of symbols 
provide high immunity against noise so um, okay you can see here so for example if we send this block as for example 0 and 1 0 and 1 we make modulation we send this this one in the receiver because the channel it has losses noises interference fading uh, many problems so here in after the demodulation assume that we receive it something like that of course you you will never be able to receive it exactly as it was transmitted so it can be received something like that okay but the cell it has the generally it has the same uh, the similar shape so in the threshold if we use a threshold we can get the original signal again this feature is not available in analog communication so now we we, uh, we are able to receive exactly the same symbol as it was transmitted okay of course it can be in error if the noise is very large so we receive this like 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 flipped upside down then we might think that this was one and this was zero it is possible but still in digital communication it has immunity against that by adding some redundant bits so we are able to find if there is error so we detect it and also we can correct it at, at the receiver but in other communication as you can see so if we have some changes in the signal it is impossible to return it back to the exactly 100% as it was transmitted okay let us go back to uh, to to the benefits of digital communication also uh, very efficient in terms of bandwidth compression as well as power digital circuits are less subject to distortion and interference uh, uh, error detection and correction possibility actually this is one of the very nice and very powerful benefits of using digital communication so once there is error we can detect that error and also we can correct that error at the receiver without sometimes without even going back to the transmitter of course we have di different kind of error detection and correction as we will see them later uh, digital circuits are more reliable and much uh, 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 less cost than analog circuit. Uh, different types of signals are treated in the same manner. So we have, we for example, we have signals from uh, video camera and signals from um, like a microphone and signals from uh, maybe keyboard or from sensors. All of them after converting the original signal to symbols then we have series of symbols from e each one of course there are differences for example the symbol rate for higher data rate like like video signal will be ha much higher than the signal of uh, coming from microphone for example but still we can treat them a similar way um, uh, much easier to backup save recall and edit of course it is clear for digital signals so it is very because it is numbers uh, we convert the signal to finite numbers so in that case you can read them uh, with your with your computer you can um, process them with any pro like like digital processor you can save them you can recall them anytime easy to save easy to recall easy to backup easy to edit so digital signals are much much easier to like manipulate than analog signals Yes. So now let us go a little bit deeper in, in the block diagrams of digital communication system. So you can uh, uh, see here that uh, um, we said in the previous block diagram that convert to symbols. Now this term is named like analog to digital converter. This is the in digital communication we call it like analog to digital converter. So we have the analog source for example, then we need to convert it to digital and also uh, if we have already digital source, then we can skip this part and go directly to the source coding. So we have here the source coding. Source coding, uh, we use it for, for example, uh, data compression. So we can uh, we, we, we can have like, we can compress data. So we, we, we save bandwidth. Also encryption. So if to increase like the security of our transmission, we make we can make some in like uh, encryption here, and of course in the receiver we need decryption, and it has actually several uh, uh, services that we can do with the source coding. And uh, now after the analog to the converter, we we convert the signal to finite number of digits. 
as we said uh, i give you example uh, if we have signal it can vary from minus one volt to one volt so the signal is varying from minus one volt to one volt how many uh, like uh, points we can assign in, in this range of course the total range is two volt okay in the analog signal actually theoretically we have infinity because it can be for example one uh, it can be point point eight five it can be point eight five oh oh three two one seven three it can be anything in analog it can be anything we then from minus one volt to one volt we can have infinity number of 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 uh, uh, like levels so uh, this is one reason that we, why we, we are not able to to restore the signal as it was because it can be anything between minus one to one in digital uh, communication first thing that we need to quantify so we based on the accuracy that we need we have to quantify this level for example we say that uh, we, we we quantify the signal from minus one to one into let's say a uh, thousand level so in that case we have one of thousand level within this two volts okay or we have um, uh, like two thousand levels or we have 10 levels we can decide how many levels depends on the application depends on the required accuracy of the the original signal so but we need to fight to 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 convert from infinity number of levels to finite number of levels this is called a quantification so we need to quantify the signal in 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 amplitude domain and also in time domain it can be anything in analog signal it can be any time it is continuous in time at least theoretically but in digital communication we need to have sampling so we, we it is like quantification in time or it is called sampling theorem so we need to sample take, take samples from the time domain and each sample we convert it to finite number in amplitude domain so this is the process of analog to digital converters. We, we are going to talk about this in next, next clip when we talk about sampling theorem. Okay. And uh, now uh, we, uh, after the source coding, we have the channel coding. The channel coding, as you can see here, as I mentioned, that we add some redundant bits in order to make to increase the capability of the transmission that we, we, we can detect if error happen. And also um, in some systems, we need also to correct the error at the receiver. Okay. This also we are going to explain uh, in, in, uh, in within this part, but not next clip, but uh, later. Okay, so we'll explain them in details, how it works, and the concept of, of channel coding. Uh, after that, we have the digital modulation. Again, so we have, as we mentioned, amplitude shift king, phase shift king, or frequency shift king, or quadrature amplitude modulation, and to transmit the, those symbols that we have already. Uh, uh, convert from the re representing the original analog and digital sources then we have the transmission over the channel in the channel in the receiver part we have to do un uh, like undo process for each block so this is digital modulation here we need to have digital demodulation we have channel coding here we have channel decoding of course correcting error or or detect at least detecting the error and then we have source coding here we have source decoding if we make compression we make decompression if we made here like uh, encryption we need here to make decryption and so on after that we have the uh, uh, series of symbols like zero and ones for example or whatever number of symbols that we have and then we use digital to analog converter so that the reverse process from analog to converter we make digital to analog conversion and then we have our analog output and here we have our digital output simply this is the basic or the major block diagrams of digital communication system remember that i i want just to add few things here that that uh, the analog to the converter because we as we said that we take samples in time and each sample we quantify it to finite number finite levels and on finite number of levels then of course this would introduce some 
like small error in the analog signal uh, shape so this one that we receive it might not be exactly the same as the original one but we can control actually this 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 error by increasing for example the number of levels and anyhow the received analog signal can be much much still better than the received analog signal in analog communication because of the distortion of noise and and channel okay and also um, uh, this could be added uh, or could be, can be seen as adding some noise small noise uh, due to the quantification process quantizing we say that, that we, we make the quantization of the original signal here we have just a description of the uh, of that what I just said now about the block diagram here you can see the the digital communication system. So, for example, if we have one one zero one zero zero, this is the ASK amplitude shift king. So you can see that we send a certain amplitude for one and uh, another amplitude. Uh, by the way, is not necessary to be zero. It can be another amplitude for the zero and a certain amplitude for one and different amplitude for zero. In the frequency shift king, you can see that for one we have certain frequency. For zero, we have different frequency. In phase, you can see the change in phase when we change from one to zero. So we can see this is we have change in phases. Here we have change in phase. So the phase is changing with whenever we have a change in the in the symbol type. We can have also like hybrid system like in QAM. We, we can have like like uh, face and amplitude modulation. Actually, face modulation is very, very important in digital communication because it provides the best spectrum efficiency as we can, we will see them later. Yeah. So this is actually just what we mentioned about the analog digital converter is, is consisting of sampling and the quantization, but I will, uh, uh, leave this for the next clip so we uh, next clip we will talk more about the sampling and uh, the analog to digital converter and sampling process sampling theorem and uh, the quantization quantization noise we will see them in more details in the next clip thank you very much for watching this clip and see you in the second one bye